Hello everybody, welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus talking again about topics like life after death, metaphysics, spirituality, and a lot more. And tonight I want to talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson, if his career is finished, and why that does matter concerning what we talk about on this channel. But before we begin, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet because I'm trying to get this channel going still. Uh, it really needs the help, and subscribing will do a lot to keep this going. So, Neil deGrasse Tyson accused of misconduct by a fourth woman. And uh, I noticed with the Me Too type of incidences, there is this type of three strikes and you're out phenomenon. So, one accusation is usually not enough to sink somebody's career two might three it's pretty likely and then when we start going past three then it doesn't look too good you will end up like any of these former public figures who are now relegated to YouTube channels only ha only having their old existing you know most hardline fans still supporting them like Bill O'Reilly who used to be on this network, Fox News, like every night, and now he just has an obscure YouTube channel. <clears throat> but I want to say that, you know, with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I like the guy. I listen to his videos, watch his videos rather, and he is one of the most outspoken proponents of the system, of physicalism slash materialism slash new atheism. So he has, in an outspoken way, said that there is no afterlife. And he said, why is it so difficult to comprehend that when we die, we go back to what we were before we were, bo before we were born, which is non-existent. He has also been outspoken in saying that there are, no ex there are likely no extraterrestrials, mirroring something Brian Cox has spouted in England which is also a very closed-minded view of the universe, even by comparison to some of his other secular contemporaries in science who would not make those types of claims. So he basically is a champion of physicalism slash materialism slash new atheism, um, secular skepticism, whatever you want to call that movement. But it is a movement that's been around for a long time, and they are the champions of quote, fighting superstition, which really means attacking any element, including elements of science, that, that goes against the grain of life being a meaningless, random universe <coughs> that uh, basically everything has arisen by chance. No one knows anything about consciousness. Consciousness is an illusion. And I go much more into this in my books, but basically uh, this uh, movement believes in something called eliminative materialism, which is that consciousness is an illusion. So, this, so it is the anti-consciousness movement. And the anti-consciousness advocates, they, they don the mantle of materialist slash physicalist slash new atheist and whatnot. And Tyson is one of their most vocal supporters. And it's not anything new because, as it turns out, uh, the materialist skeptic community has been facing a lot of trouble in this area. So we had, um, I think about last year, uh, Lawrence Krauss, um, the, uh, this um, kind of uh, cynical dude, if you've listened to him, he's kind of, a, you know, kind of a, I don't want to say mean-spirited, but I mean, he's, look, he's not like... He's not the most charismatic guy compared to like Neil Tyson, right? But he does make make the rounds, and he's also an outspoken physicalist, materialist. You know, the whole you know representing the mainstream, representing mainstream academia, representing the the mainstream opposition to religious thought, which is the the counter opposite. And anyway, so anyway, so Lawrence Krauss came under fire for numerous allegations. And that was kind of the tip of the iceberg because it turns out that there were also issues stemming with Richard Dawkins. And as this Salon article points out, there's an internal division in 
the atheist skeptic community with women complaining that it's all too many old white men who are denigrating to women who run the show. Now, normally, I do not condone all these arguments we see in the media of oh, white men are so terrible. Uh, I think a lot of that is a little bit of like a media generated brainwashing. Okay, we'll judge people based on their merits, not their skin color. But with this case, it is interesting because back in the day, years ago, and you know, I wasn't. I've been involved in this topic for a long time. About maybe seven years ago, I was asked by Alex Sakaris of the the Great Skeptico podcast, which is actually you know it's a pro sci podcast. Um, to maybe do some presentations with local skeptic atheist community groups and see how possible it is to get along with the opposition. Now this never became an episode. I disappeared off the face of the earth. I didn't finish that project. I, I probably should have. So, but a couple of times I would go to groups of the local atheist, the atheist community members, and this is a subculture, okay? The, the skeptics with a capital S the same people who sit around all day editing people's Wikipedia articles and removing um, removing legitimate evidence toward any topic they hate, you know, and going on Rupert Sheldrake's Wikipedia page all day and, and fighting with people. Like, the, this is the, the, the skeptics, okay? So I would do presentations for these guys, and it was a room usually of, like, 25 angry-looking middle-aged white guys. And just I would not use the term warm to describe these people. At the time, the guy who introduced me to these groups was a buddy of mine who was heavily involved in that community. Yeah, he's still a good friend of mine, but he knows Michael Shermer and a lot of the who's who in that area. And basically, he came from being a Christian fundamentalist to becoming an atheist skeptic, and then he went back to the Christian fundamentalists, and he said... Even if I'm still a skeptic about God and these topics, you're so energized going to church with my old friends. But when I'm around the the skeptic community, it is the opposite. It's like all my energy is being drained out of me. It's all this negative energy and I can't be around them. So this leads back to kind of what I'd say is the next point, and take this with a grain of salt because I also take it with a grain of salt, but some of the more new agey guys out there like David Wilcock, they argue that the whole Me Too type movement is basically karma coming home to roost. So suddenly it's no longer possible in this kind of like age of Aquarius or whatever you want to call it for people to be, you know, committing these types of this type of like predatory behavior or selfish behavior or destructive behavior and being able to get away with it so we we look at the take that we're looking at the you know the, the taking down of the hollywood elite of the catholic church of various politicians and included on that list now seems to be the new atheists and materialists so that's interesting i would say all of the aforementioned groups have a kind of collective karmic issue happening and i think you can look at this in very matter-of-fact terms by saying when you take a group that doesn't have strong values, the values that will be replaced tend to be selfish values based around the acquisition of material goods, the acquisition of wealth, power, and sex. And so I think we can see that in all those subcultures. So the materialist atheist community uh, I don't think they get around that because basically we get a bunch of people together united by the belief in putting other people with spiritual ideas down. Then it's like, you know, what what backbone do they have? They believe in a meaningless universe and they believe that we cease to exist when we die and consciousness is an illusion. What kind of good values can come out of that soup of thought? Because this group, and it rep, you know, it's represented by a, a chunk of the population, and it rules academia, and it's base it's basically the system. It's it's the philosophy of the machine, the secular machine. But 
but this um, I almost dare say globalist ideology is anti-spirituality so it is anti-consciousness they don't believe consciousness is real and they will do anything they can to denigrate people who uh, do not agree with this point of view so let's ask how um, how morally just is it? Because they oftentimes hold this shield of virtue up, that they are the crusaders against superstition. Well, what these people do is they will take a topic where there is objective evidence for it. And by the way, I don't mind the dogs barking. Gotta love the dogs, but they don't, they don't shut up in this house. Uh, so what they do is, let, let's say there's a topic, there's objective evidence for it. This subculture will go on Wikipedia, they will edit out the objective evidence in support of it, and they will tell grieving people that their deceased loved, their deceased loved one no longer exists, and it's weak, superstitious nonsense to believe otherwise. So their, their solution basically is to toughen up. And then people might say, yeah, but you know, there's, there, there's some evidence to the contrary. What about near-death experiences? And then they, they, they cite like a bunch of robots, the same usually disproven studies again and again. Like how often do we hear materialist atheist skeptics say near-death experiences are caused by oxygen deprivation in the brain? A thoroughly disproven, non-scientific, because completely erroneous theory about what causes massive expanded consciousness at the time of death. They say it's related to oxygen deprivation, which is scientifically proven to cause a decrease in consciousness. Uh, they say it's a release of DMT at the time of death, which new studies have shown the amount of DMT that is released at the time of death is negligible, if any, at all. So. These people, though, they propagandize and they, they don't look at things objectively. If they really were fair and honest, then they would say, here is our side of the story, and then here is their side of the story. Pick whatever resonates with you. But that's not the way they operate. They are much, much more aggressive than that. And maybe if they were more respectful, then I think that it wouldn't be such a hateful group of people and maybe they wouldn't be internally destroying themselves and falling victim to this kind of karmic backlash via me too and kind of to reinforce my point i don't know if we're going to be seeing the opposition to these guys being uh falling victim to the to the me too era I don't think we're going to see Dean Radin being accused of uh, multiple allegations. I don't think we're going to see Richard Dawkins' um, nemesis, Rupert Sheldrake, falling victim. Or even Deepak Chopra, the most maligned person by the skeptic materialists. I mean, they hate him. They call him a, they call him, you know, a fraud, a charlatan. Uh, they try to get him deplatformed from events. They um, try to get, you know, prevent him from, from appearing on certain media broadcasts by petitioning and saying, don't bring this guy on. He spreads superstition and he's a charlatan, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, Deepak Chopra, at least, <laughs> isn't being accused of sexual misconduct. So, you know, do they really have a moral footing anymore to keep saying those types of things about people. And would they still be suffering from this kind of backlash if they internally were a healthier, nicer group of people? Well, you know how I feel about that. That's about all I have to say. If you like this video, again, please hit subscribe. Uh, you can check out my books, Understanding Life After Death, The Afterlife and Beyond. We have a big Facebook group called Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, afterlifetopics.com. More videos also available. All of that is in the channel description. I'll see you guys on the next video.